In this video, I'm going to talk about the M101, Messier 101 galaxy called the Pinwheel Galaxy in the 2023 supernova. And photos I've made of this galaxy from May 30th to July 2nd at this point using the Dwarf 2 telescope. It's a small automated telescope, one inch diameter aperture, very small but very capable. I'm located in Omaha, Nebraska in the suburbs and the sky is not dark. So the Bortle number is seven. You could uh, look up that information. Just briefly on the characteristics of the dwarf, feel free to pause the video if you want to read more of the details, but uh, uh, concentrate here. The uh, field of view of this telescope is three degrees, uh, only three degrees. So uh, that uh, gets us to extended objects on the sky, the sun and the moon. Uh, it does not allow this telescope to take good photographs of planets. You'll just get a point of light. You won't see any rings of Saturn or details uh, to speak of. Um, so it has a, a camera attached, a dedicated electronics. There is no eyepiece for this telescope, no eyepiece. Um, I produce the output. I give a command to produce the output in the FITS format, F-I-T-S. It's an astronomy picture type format. And the telescope is controlled by my Android phone. Um, telescope is 2.6 pounds. And in 2023, this can be purchased in the upper $500 uh, for cost. Uh, for current specifications and details, go to dwarflab.com, D-W-A-R-F-L-A-B.com. I do not get any uh, compensation for that advertising. The supernova in the pinwheel galaxy in 2023, some details about the galaxy. This uh, galaxy is 21 million light years from the Milky Way. And for comparison, Andromeda galaxy is 2.5 million light years away. So this object is eight times further away than the Andromeda galaxy, still relatively close as far as the universe goes. The supernova discovery was May 19th, 2023 by an astronomer in Japan. Uh, astronomers then looked at archive uh, photos of the uh, pinwheel galaxy, and there was a, a May 17th photo that uh, the supernova had started becoming bright enough to be recognized as a distinct object, May 17th. Uh, just for a little background, other recent bright supernova, a bright supernova would be one where a common amateur telescope would be able to view the object. Uh, 2014 and M82, that's another Messier catalog number galaxy, and 2011 back in M101, a little unusual that uh, uh, M101 had a, a supernova 12 years ago also. <coughs> um, the Dwarf Telescope, um, it succeeds in recording the light of dim objects by allowing multiple pictures to be taken and stacked on top of each other. So that helps the stars and the galaxies and the nebula, whatever your photograph, to become brighter uh, while keeping the scar, star field in between, uh, dark, dark in between the stars. Um, if you look carefully at this uh, image, you'll see some diagonal black lines across the corners. The telescope is an altitude azimuth system. As the Earth rotates, the telescope compensates for your Earth's rotation by shifting itself in altitude and azimuth so it can keep the galaxy, in this case, centered in the photograph. As a consequence, the frames of uh, successive pictures, the edges, are not in the same spot. Um, so you get these dark lines. That's not a problem because uh, typically, at least for me, I'm doing cropping, heavy cropping, to just isolate the center portion of the photo and uh, the dark lines don't bother. So let's start here. The first photo I got was May 23rd. The arrow points to the supernova. And in this particular way I cropped it, I'd say the supernova lies above the galaxy. You can see the dense core of the galaxy and some of the spiral arms. And you might want to try to pay attention to the brightness of the supernova compared to some star. These stars are in our own galaxy. Uh, but you can compare the brightness, apparent brightness of the objects in uh, looking at kind of the size of the dot. Uh, so May 23rd, 
0500 Universal Coordinated Time. This is the time in Greenwich, England. I reside in Central Daylight Time, so we're five hours uh, behind. So this would be midnight in between May 22nd and May 23rd. Um, I gave a command to have the telescope take 300 pictures. Each was 10 seconds. And you can set the gain on how much you push the electronics of the, of the camera. I set it at 80. And I'm still experimenting with that gain number. I don't know what's best. The Dwarf 2 stacked automatically those 300 pictures. And then uh, I'm able to download the pictures to my phone or to my computer. I used a program on my computer called Picasa <coughs> to adjust the contrast and the brightness uh, this is a simple uh, home photo uh, adjustment program. It's not astronomical. It's not an astronomy dedicated uh, image processor, but got that result. Then May 24th, and again, the arrow points towards the supernova. I, I need to caution you. The way I cropped the picture uh, ended up with the supernova being at about the two o'clock position on the if you use a clock dial on the galaxy, um, you are not seeing rotation of the galaxy. The different position of the supernova and all the stars around the galaxy, if you pay attention to that, you'll see they're rotated also. They're shifted. Um, it's just the artifact of how I cropped the image and at what time I started the uh, taking the picture and how the telescope was uh, aligned up on the sky. So 300 pictures were stacked. I tried a filter to block the light pollution, and then I, I stacked it and uh, used Picasso to adjust. My focus was not quite as good on this night. On May 30th, uh, fewer pictures, around 199, and that didn't come out as good for uh, producing a galaxy uh, photograph. Uh, but again, stacked with using the automated system of the Dwarf Telescope and then use Picasso to adjust the contrast. June 4th, uh, 200 pictures, same uh, processing. And you, you see a red uh, streak over here on the left. That's an artifact of uh, what's called a hot pixel on the camera that the Dwarf Telescope did not subtract out uh, correctly on this particular uh, stacking of the images. Then June 9th, um, 700 pictures, each six seconds. And this time I uh, downloaded all 700 pictures to my computer, my desktop computer, in the FITS format. And then there's a program, a free program that can be downloaded, serial. And this program stacks the images and has more tools in it to adjust the image that I'm still learning how to use. Uh, there are YouTube tutorials on using Cyril. After Cyril created one FITS image, a file, I sent that FITS image to uh, a website that has an app on it called FITS Scrubber. Uh, both of these are free apps. And uh, FITS Scrubber sharpens the stars a little bit and removes some noise from the, uh, the background. Again, the arrow points to the supernova. The way I cropped the picture, the supernova ended up being on the right side of the galaxy image. And June 15th, um, the stars were not quite as well in focus. So the Cyril had a problem. Cyril could not line up the stars effectively. So this is back to using the stack of photos out of the dwarf telescope and then Picasso. And then I experimented with another simple... Uh, image processing program called Snapseed that adjusts contrast and brightness. Um, June 21st, uh, back to using Cyril to uh, stack the images, so stacked all 500 and then fit scrubber to, to sharpen images and uh, clean up the, um, uh, the dark space in between the stars. And again, we're seeing the, the, gal the galaxy arms with the supernova in the arm. And again, if you kind of compare to the star over here, they're kind of similar. The supernova is not increasing in brightness anymore. It's slowly decreasing in brightness. But I still hope to photograph through July and August and, and get usable images. Uh, June 25th, again, using Cyril and Fitzgrubber to uh, uh, 
process the image. And again, I've cropped, and the way I cropped the supernova ended up being on above the galaxy in the picture. And then the last photo I have is July 3rd, again using Cyril and Fit Scrubber. And uh, you can see the supernova, you know, perhaps, you know, it's a little dimmer than the, this comparison star here, but uh, still very, very similar. So that, that's fun to use this one inch diameter telescope to come get an image of a galaxy showing spiral arms uh, is amazing to me. But the electronics make it possible and the computers stacking the images. A um, little more uh, information is available on two websites that I have, astronomy.gpclements.com. At this site, uh, you can download a calendar for the year that mainly applies to the central United States as to what might be uh, interesting to view. It's useful all across the United States, but you'll have to adjust sometimes. I'm in central daylight time, so you have to adjust appropriately the times that are mentioned. Uh, and physics.gpclements.com. I'm a retired physics and astronomy teacher, and I have posted about 500 YouTube videos. Uh, these two websites, astronomy.gpclements.com and physics.gpclements.com, has an annotated list, an organized list that you can click through and find uh, a topic that might be of interest to you. Uh, the astronomy has sort of general public uh, interest information about uh, eclipses. We've got a good eclipse coming up in 2024 of the sun. And both of them have short lectures, 15 minutes or so, and problems that I've created, invented, and then show step-by-step -step solutions to those problems for physics and astronomy, more of them for physics than for astronomy. There are no solutions to textbook problems. So if, if you're a student doing homework, you will not find a solution to a textbook problem, but you'll find one that's very similar to textbook problems. All of this is free. There's no registration. I do not collect your name. I don't collect your email or any other information. And uh, hopefully the skies will stay clear and the supernova will be bright enough for me to add to this video. And I'll post uh, another video with photos from uh, July and August. I hope you uh, enjoyed looking at the sky and enjoyed looking at the pictures and learn a little bit more about the dwarf 